Okay. So we'll be continuing with our work on kinematics. So we'll start with another one dimensional example today. And then uh, later on in class, I'll introduce two dimensional kinematics. Okay. So we're still looking at our one dimensional kinematics. So with, so these are the equations that we'll look at and we'll do another example. So last week we talked about dropping a ball or a rock from some height and using our kinematics to figure out how long that took. Uh, today we'll do throwing a ball up and then having it fall. So you throw a ball. And initial velocity, let's say three meters per second, straight up. And the question will ask how long will it take for the ball? to reach the ground. Okay, so it's good to have your kinematic equations so you can pick, you know, which one that you wanna pick. Okay, so if we go through our problem, we're given an initial velocity of three meters per second straight up. So all of our initial velocity is in the y direction. So I guess I could rewrite these as delta y instead of delta x. And then it asks, how long does it take? So that's a time. So the, we get an initial velocity that's three meters per second in the y direction. We're asked to find a time. Any other information that we're given? Oh, I guess I guess I did not write this problem very well. Uh, let's say, let's say you start at an initial height, initial height of three meters above the ground. Okay, so now you're given an initial height. And if you're landing on the ground, then you also have a final height. So our y initial is three. Our y final is zero. So if we put these two things together, delta y is final minus initial. So that would be negative three meters in the j hat direction. Okay. 
Anything else that we should assume in this problem? Right. So our acceleration is going to be due to gravity. And that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's also in the j hat direction. So everything's in the y direction for this. OK, so looking at these variables, which equation do you guys want to use to solve this? The first one, right. So we'll do it this way, and then I'll show you a different way to do it, because this way is going to be less fun. Um, so if we have this equation, and we plug in all of the things that we know, so, Delta Y was negative three. The initial velocity was three. Time is what we're solving for. And then acceleration was negative 9.8 T squared. Okay, so I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit. So I'm just moving the everything to the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, so how would we go about solving an equation that looks like this for time? Yeah, you'd have to use the quadratic formula if this was nicer, maybe you could try to factor it, but I don't think that's going to work because of this 9.8. Um, so yeah, you'd have to use the quadratic formula. So just a reminder, the quadratic formula, uh, so if you have something that looks like this and you want to solve for T, then it's plus or it's negative B, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Okay, so a is the, the variable that goes with the squared uh, term. So in all Okay. So if we plug all of that in now, One point one four six seconds. What we did was basically if I plot the position, the y position as a function of time. So we started at a height of three meters. We threw the ball straight up. So as time goes, the ball is going to increase in height, it'll reach some maximum height, and then it'll start falling back down. So we, if we look at this graph, we basically just solved the whole problem in one go, which is fine. Something else that we can do is instead break it into different pieces and solve each piece separately and then add up the two times that we get. So what this is gonna look like is, let's call this part A and part B. For part A, your initial height is still the three meters. 
We don't know what our final height's gonna be. We know our initial velocity was three meters. Per second, we know our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second. And then if we've reached the maximum height, uh, what can we say about our velocity at that maximum height? Right, so at your maximum height, your y velocity is zero. So we know that v final, equals zero. So if we wrote our kinematic equations, so given these variables, which equation would you guys pick to solve for the time to go half to reach the max height. Yeah. So number one is uh, not good because we don't know the final height. Number three doesn't have a time in it. So what you could do is you could use number three to find the height and then plug that in to number one to solve for the time. Uh, but the easiest thing to do is to just use number, equation number two. So B final equals B initial plus A T. So we're solving for time. So we would subtract the V initial to the other side and then divide by the acceleration. The final velocity was zero. The initial velocity was three and we're dividing by negative 9.8. So if you take three divided by 9.8, you get 0 0.306 seconds. Okay, so that was just the time to reach the maximum height. So now that we have that, we'll find the time that it takes uh, to go from its max height to the ground. So for part B, now we're starting at some unknown height and then we're falling back down to the ground which is a final height of zero we know our initial velocity is zero as we are at our max height our final velocity is going to be some number that we could solve for, but we don't know what it is. Our acceleration is negative 9.8. And we're solving for time. So given these variables, Can we use any of these equations to find time? Okay, so if we use the second one, we would need to know what our final velocity was. So if we wanted to use the first one, we would have to do, uh, we would need to know what delta y is. Oh, I did not write that correctly. I'm 
and then problem three or equation three we don't know the final velocity or the final or the initial height and it doesn't have time in it so it, it's not super useful anyways so basically we don't have enough information to solve this problem it, as it's laid out but we do have enough information to find the maximum height that this object reaches, right? So we'll do that first, and then we'll have the initial height here, and then we can solve the problem. So if we look back over here, given all of these things, and now trying to solve for the max height, which equation would we pick? So we also have time now. So we could use either equation one or equation three to, to solve this. I'm going to do, I think equation three might be easier. And uh, just a, like if you're doing a test or something, um, it's, so for example, if we, if we wanted to use equation one, we would need to rely on the time that we already solved for. But if you solve for that time incorrectly, then when you plug that time into the next part of the problem, it would also be incorrect. So I would, if I were grading, I would still give you the points because you did the right process, but you used the wrong number. But you can see how, like if it was a multiple choice test or something, that initial error that you made is now propagating through your problem. And so you'll get everything wrong. So just strategically, you would want to use equation three because you're not relying on something that you calculated previously. So that's why I would pick equation three. So if we do that, uh, b final squared equals b initial squared plus two a delta y. Our final velocity is zero. Our initial velocity was three. Oh, I guess I should do this in variables first. So this is negative b initial squared. So I moved the b initial to the other side. And then we're solving for delta y. So divide by 2a. Plugging in your numbers, this is negative 3 squared over 2 times negative 9.8. So that's nine divided by 19.6. That's 0 0.4546, uh, I guess we'll say, meters. But that's delta y which is y final minus y initial. So what that's telling you is that you ended up almost a half meter higher than you started. And when we started at three meters, so if we add the three meters to the other side, then our max height was 3.46 meters above the ground. So now we're going to take this max height and we're going to plug that into here for the initial height that we fall from. So we plug in the max height that we just found, which was 3.46 meters. Okay. So 
So now given these variables, uh, which equation should we use to proceed to find the time? Yes. We've got a two. So the problem with two is that we don't have the final velocity yet. So one, people are saying, yeah. So we're gonna use problem one or equation one. And now equation one is gonna be simplified a bit because uh, the initial velocity is zero. So now we don't have to do a quadratic formula to solve this problem. So solving this equation for time, we would multiply uh, or divide both sides by one half A. So that would be two delta Y over A equals T squared. Delta Y is Y final minus Y initial. So that's zero minus 3.46. So that's negative 3.46 meters in the y direction. So solving for time, you would just take the square root of, of this side and plugging in the values, that's two times negative 3.46 over negative 9.8. And so keeping track of these minus signs is important. And that's why knowing which things are vectors is important uh, because now you see that minus signs cancel. And so your things under your square root are positive. So you're, you're safe to do that square root. So this was TB, and we found TA earlier. And what should be happening is that the total time will be those two things added together. Uh, So 0.84 and 0.306. But if you add those together, you would get 1.146. One and so now if we compare that, to what we got the other way, we get the same value. So another reason to consider breaking your uh, problem into different pieces like this are some problems will be part A through B, C, D and Eventually, they might want you to find the time, but they'll ask you for these steps in between, like what was the max height? Uh, what is the uh, velocity at the max height? Uh, what are the, like, how long does it take to get to the max height? And so if if the total problem is just asking you for the total time, then you can use the quadratic formula. But if your problem is asking for different pieces along the way, then it might be useful to break it into these different pieces and then add your times together once you have those different components. <laughs> 